Okay, this is the ICO 369 as it arrived. Um, I've got the uh, scope hooked up so this thing does have an on off switch. Makes kind of a zoom sound as you turn it on, so it must be um, something going on in there. There's a light that's on. Um, probing this with my scope, just touching it to the case, um, there is. 180 volts uh, peak to peak on the ground. That's what I'm measuring. And uh, measuring the same thing in there. Now I can do a differential measurement because I don't want to kill my probe if the case is hot. Whoops. Let's measure from ground to there in this. Uh, purple trace is the difference between uh, the A and B channels um, and it's not showing any uh, any radio frequency going on you know I can change that knob it's not doing anything change the uh, RF level it's not doing anything sweep width So I would say that it, uh, marker on off, it's not doing anything. I would say that it is uh, broken, but it'll be interesting to figure out what's wrong with it. So just a little bit more about the uh, front of this thing. So it's it's got these same... Uh, weird connectors that the uh, the night uh, RF generator I had came with. That's this thing which is actually some kind of ancient microphone plug. Um, this one here is marked demodulator cable so it would screw in there. Um, over here for the scope, it actually has this funky twin axe cable of some sort. And what that does is that conveys both the X and the uh, Y information to the scope. So it looks like I can disassemble this connector and I'll probably try to put some reasonable uh, cables on it so I can hook it up to the scope. Just curious if these are also hot in here. Oops, let me get the other one. Yeah, we've got 176 volts there, and 180 volts there. So it's kind of, kind of a little bit troubling that everything in this thing appears hot. We'll have to uh, take it apart and take a look. Looking at the uh, ICO 369 uh, sweep generator, I managed to get it uh, working. Uh, when I first uh, opened it up, I had a few issues with it. One was that this dial would kind of um, get stuck as it turned. All I had to do was just take out the set screw and, you know, move it back, move the knob back a little bit. It was just catching on the uh, on the plastic disc in there. Um, another thing I did, this uh, there was a problem with uh, this, uh, this knob here. It's kind of a stiff potentiometer, and uh, there's actually a crack in the knob that was on it, and it wasn't tightening down, and then it was just kind of spinning on it. And once I took it off, I realized that, you know, yes, you can turn it, and I've globbed this up with JB Weld to try to repair the crack in that. Um... What else have I done with it? I think so. Let's uh, let, let's take a look at it. I've got it on the highest band, which is the 75 to uh, 220 band. I did replace this, you know, ancient RF connector with a modern BNC jack, so I can plug my scope in. Uh, if we look at the scope over here, we're reading about uh, 73.5 megahertz. Let me zoom in over there. And then go back out. Um, so, you know, we adjust this. 
we will see the frequency change as expected all the way up to around somewhere around 200 megahertz the scope is kind of having trouble counting the frequency I think because of the uh, the sweep effect go back down to somewhere in the middle here so let's take a look so this is a sweep generator right now the sweep control is set to the minimum but as I increase the sweep control you know we will see that it is getting more variations in uh, in frequency as we increase the sweep. So we decrease the sweep, go back down to more or less a steady frequency, increase the sweep, you get progressively uh, wider frequency results on the oscilloscope. So I would say the uh, sweep control is working right. There's an RF level uh, knob that feels like the, the pot is kind of uh, maybe a little bit noisy. It's got this uh, the this attenuator that attenuates in like 20 decibel steps, which you know it makes it about a tenth as big, and then one more step, and it'll be you know even smaller, and then you know eventually we get down to the point where it's tiny, and there seems to be more noise than signal at that lowest step. So maybe there's something that needs to be looked into there. Um, this here is all has to do with the marker side of the uh, generator. Haven't haven't fussed with that. Uh, let's look at some of the other ranges on it. So this is the uh, 36 to 95 uh, range. Um, it's uh, the sine sine wave on these uh, these two base function generators seems to get less sinusoidal as you uh, go down in range, so it's getting a little bit a little bit funkier. Here's the uh, the 16 to 42 range. Now I don't know if you can see this real well on the screen, but there's a lot of extra junk coming along with the signal there. All these extra uh, parasitic waves. And you know, even though we're not sweeping, we've got a kind of a fairly wide, fairly wide trace. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to ask around on the forums and see if something is uh, something is off with that. Going down into the six to sixteen megahertz range, um, you know, we've got even more noise and and uh, weird weird crap going on. Uh, this is where we would find our 10.7 uh, megahertz signal, which is kind of important to us for FM radio alignment. So there are the uh, the Rigels reading 10.7 at this point, and you know I'd, I'd like to forget how to clean that up because that doesn't uh, doesn't look real nice. Let's zoom back out to see everything. And then we've got one more range, which is 3 to uh, 7.5 megahertz. And it, too, has a lot of extra, extra junk in there. And, you know, I don't know if that's just normal for this period of generator, but I'm going to ask around on the, uh, on the forums about that. So let's, uh, this is actually the on-off switch, let's shut it off and take a look on the inside of it a little more. So back here is some power line filtering stuff. There's uh, a capacitor here, capacitor here, and two inductors. Uh, looking at the schematic, I can tell it's almost identical to what is inside of this standard uh, power entry filter. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack those out, cut a hole in the case, mount this uh, thing, and then have a, uh, a nice modern uh, plug in the back of the RF generator. I just wanted to show something that you don't see every day. Let me take the camera off here. 
And that is that thing right there, which is a three-legged uh, capacitor. A ceramic one, as far as I can tell. It's uh, in the schematic, it's two separate capacitors, but you can see it's got uh, two legs that go to each side of hot, and then the middle leg goes to ground. Interesting. Okay, it may not be the cleanest job in the world, but I now have a hole that the uh, power entry filter fits into. Also cleared out any junk that was in the way in there, which was most notably this uh, assembly here that had capacitor and inductors. Let's get a better view. It's going to come through. Okay, I finished mounting the uh, nice modern uh, power line entry filter. One wire over here to neutral, the other wired hot through the fuse holder, um, out and back over to the uh, terminal strip. From the back, looks like that. Okay, I've made a few modifications to the sweep generator just to uh, make life easier. Uh, the first thing I did is I replaced a couple of the old microphone cable RF jacks with these modern BNC connectors, one for the RF out, one for the demodulator in. Uh, I've also added a switch. The switch lets me turn the uh, blanking circuit on and off. Then on the back, I have uh, I've replaced the power cord. It used to come out here. I replaced it with a modern... Uh, three-wire uh, computer-type power receptacle, so you can plug normal computer cord in the back of it. That also grounds the entire chassis. Inside of the old hole where the power cord used to come out, I hooked up a BNC jack that I've run through a uh, two-picofarad capacitor to the, uh, the marker oscillator, and that allows me to uh, hook up a frequency counter and get the exact frequency that the uh, marker oscillator is putting out. So here's a uh, quick demonstration of the, uh, the the jack I added for the marker oscillator. I've hooked my uh, scope probe up to the uh, the BNC jack on the output, and we can see over here I'm getting a nice crisp crisp uh, waveform out of the uh, marker oscillator. This waveform is at 9.09 megahertz, which is about what the dial reads dial needs a little bit of calibration I think but yeah we can see the uh, the marker oscillator and we can hook up a real frequency counter there and we can get you know a real precise value which would be handy so there it is um, up there on the higher scale here we're getting a 60 about 61 megahertz so I think that's kind of a handy feature Okay, now uh, just to demonstrate the uh, switch I put in for the blanking circuit. That's this switch right here that I added. It switches off the uh, the cathode to the uh, the blanking tube. Um, so just to understand how the blanking works, if we look at our uh, if we look at our RF signal, you know, there's the uh, the RF signal that the the generator is currently putting out. Um, but if we zoom way out on it, we can see what happens is that it's periodically shutting that RF output off. Now the reason it's doing that is because the, uh, the sweep waveform, which is down here in blue, this is a 60 hertz waveform, and it's used to, uh, to, to sweep the frequency across there. Um, every time it goes uh, on this downswing, it shuts the uh, oscillator off. And that's because on an old time uh, oscilloscope you'd be doing this in an XY mode on your scope and uh, if, if you didn't blank it then you would see the thing sweep forward and then you'd see it sweep backward. And you know that would, that would kind of give you a double image which you might not want in all cases. So if I flip my uh, switch right over here I switch it back uh, we can see that it has got rid of those blanking intervals. 
and then if we zoom back out you know we can see we can see that our uh, that our RF is still in there do a quick uh, tear down there's two screws that came out of the back that hold it together um, so we take those out actually a little bit warm because I've been running it we can take the back cover off just get hung up a little bit kind of gets hung up on those feet that go through the bottom there um, there now you can kind of see inside of it. I'm going to flip it around so there's uh, there's a total of uh, two oscillator two oscillators there's the uh, the main RF oscillator here the uh, marker oscillators over here in this kind of walled off section just tilt that for a good view it's got uh, lots and lots of tubes um, there was a uh, an old electrolytic capacitor there. I took it out, replaced it with a couple modern electrolytics. Um, it's got one uh, big transformer. The magic that does this sweeping is this transformer kind of hidden in the middle here. Um, yeah, so you can kind of see the variable capacitors for the oscillator working and for the marker oscillator. Rotate it around, get a good, good look at everything that's in there. You know, it's kind of a nice copper coated, although there's some kind of, kind of corrosion on there. Don't know how this thing's been stored over the years. Um, view from this side. Uh, it's got uh, lots of tubes. So one, two, three, four tubes there. There's one upside down here. And there's one upside down there. Let's look at the underside. So view from underneath. You can see here's the uh, two uh, 22 uh, microfarad 450 volt caps that I put in to replace the uh, the old metal can. Um, you can see those upside down tubes are mounted in there. Uh, this uh, modern chunk of wire here is the uh, the wire that I installed to give me the uh, marker frequency out on the back. Uh, right here is the uh, modern uh, receptacle that I installed to get uh, plug an AC power cord in. Got various uh, front panel jacks across here. So I replaced uh, these two with uh, BNC jacks. This is a weird uh, twin axe jack over there. Um, there's two uh, kind of hidden pots. This pot here just the AGC circuit. Uh, this is a phase control pot. You can actually access this one from the back panel with a screwdriver. This one you kind of have to take it apart to fuss with. Um, here, let me give a zoom in on the underside. Anyone who wants to take a look. And let me flip it over. Give a nice zoom in view of the top side. Then uh, finally let me show you this uh, this cable that I rigged up. So the, uh, the generator did come with this connector. It had a couple wires that were cut off in it. Uh, this is for the uh, the oscilloscope output. If you see here, it's got like a. Is that visible? Let me zoom in. There's uh, this really funky uh, two pin kind of twin axle type uh, connector built into the scope. One of these is for, for, the, uh, for the X and one is for the Y. Took to your oscilloscope. So, like I say, I'm fortunate that the previous owner did include this connector, albeit cut off. So I added some RG316 cable, disassembled it, soldered it in there, put a couple BNC jacks on the end of this, then mark them uh, X and Y so I can hook them to my scope, you know, 
Y into that jack, X into this jack, and then uh, twin X connector on there. But uh, yeah, it's very handy to actually have this thing. If you don't have one of these, I suspect you'd probably have to, you know, hack this up and put some BNC, BNC jacks in there. So for testing, the uh, the the uh, manual had me assemble something that it called a uh, broadband detector. Um, this is just a testing feature, and it's just used to generate a flat signal on the. Uh, on the output when measuring the sweep so we can see if the uh, RF generator is working properly. Um, it's a relatively simple circuit. It's just a uh, resistor, a couple of 47 picofarad capacitors, and a selenium diode. On this end I put a, uh, a BNC jack because that's where the RF generator will hook up and on the other end I just put some uh, terminals because that's where we will uh, hook up the demodulator probe. Hi, I've got everything hooked up. We're going to give it a shot. Um, the sweep generator is here. Uh, we have BNC cable comes out, goes through a 50 ohm terminator into this thing, which is called a broadband detector. The signal comes out of there, goes into this demodulator cable. This cable came uh, with with the sweep generator. I did put a uh, a new BNC jack on the back. Um, the sweep generator then mixes the demodulator signal with the marker signal and outputs them to the scope. The scope's over here in uh, XY mode. The, uh, the x-axis is inverted from what you would think it would be. It's uh, actually higher frequencies are over here, lower frequencies are there. So it sweeps, sweeps uh, on this screen from high frequency to a lower frequency. And then it uh, engages the blanking interval and then sweeps backward from um, low frequency back to high frequency. And then uh, the blanking interval switches back off, the oscillator turns on, you get this AGC blip, and then it sweeps again. So we move the marker from one side to the other. Um, moves that blip on there, so that's so you can know where your center is at. So right now my center is about uh, 10.122 uh, megahertz. Let's say I wanted to, to uh, align my radio to 10.7. I just turn this up to uh, 10.7, try to get it kind of as precise as I can. Actually uh, very stable, that's impressive. There, there's about 10.7. Now we can see the blip is a little bit off center, so we'll adjust the sweep center frequency. Now the center sweep is at uh, 10.7. Um, if we want to know what the two extremes of the sweep are, we can move the marker to this side. We'll see this side is at uh, about 15.7 megahertz. This side over here is at about 7.7 .7 megahertz. Let's go back to the middle there at about 10.7. Uh, we can we can make the sweep narrower if we want, so I'm adjusting the sweep width down. Um, let's recenter. There, now we're centered at 10.7, but now we're sweeping from 12.5 uh, to uh, 9.45. Uh, we can adjust the RF level with this vernier control, or we can adjust the RF level with the stepped attenuator. You can make the uh, marker smaller, you can make the marker really big. Uh, the trace size, you can control the size of the trace. You know, as you bring it down, it actually, the, the whole thing kind of gets a little bit tilted, so I don't know if it makes any sense to have that thing anything other than all the way up. So now we can we can take a look and see how the uh, blanking switch works. So you can see blanking is currently on. That's shown by the uh, you know the blanking uh, circuit kicks in and then we sweep backwards down there at zero. If we turn the blanking circuit off, um, then it kind of collapses everything down to one line. We sweep over and then we sweep backwards on the same line. Um, not sure why the marker shows up twice on there. Uh, maybe someone else knows an explanation for that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, putting this thing through its paces, 
it, uh, it, it seems to be working. Let me uh, zoom in so we can do a nice close up on what the sweep looks like. Let's refocus. So there's uh, the marker at 10.7. Bring it over to the side, marker at 12.3. The other side is marker at uh, 9.4. It's what it looks like to fuss with the marker size. Here's what it looks like to play with the RF level. Bit noisy there. Here's the RF attenuator. Um, the trace size control. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.